Today I want to talk about Visco. As you can see, I have still not bought the full version. And every time you reopen the GUI, you have to wait a little bit longer than before. A really cool way to deal with people who don't have a license yet, because it is annoying enough to remind you to buy something, but it's still not being an asshole. So you can still use the whole plugin as long as you are a little bit patient, at least. That's very nice. I like that. This weird tentacle monster thingy here is an interpretation of a sample. You can morph between samples that have been imported here. So it's kind of like Simplan 2, but specifically made for drums because you have multiple drum layers that you can use. And you have some really obscure parameters as well. I already used it here, as you can see, in a beat, which sounds like this. Damn, I have to wait again. One pair of pants later. So now you can see it a little better. I automated a few parameters. We will get into what these parameters do soon enough. I just wanted to show you that even though it is meant to be a drum sampler, you can make some really obscure stuff with it, which does not have to be drums. It is just something rhythmic, more like it can be very morphy with only a few automations. And that's the remarkable thing about it, because this plugin has some huge macro parameters that do so much with just one parameter that it just enables you to work a little bit faster with modulation and stuff. So what I want to do for this video is take this part and just design more stuff with Visco and have this mostly uncut for you so you can feel into it if you like to. Not a very fast paced thing. Sometimes I might explain stuff. Okay, so when you just loaded it, it already has a few samples in it. Yeah, just one octave of samples. When you press keys that are out of the octave, oh, that also works, okay. So that's pretty nice. But what's not pretty nice is that it still has the default drums. And the whole fun of plugins like this, of course, is that you can load in your own samples. Of course, you could try snap. And then go over to the other side and load another snap. And then maybe find out what's in between those snaps. Pretty cool. It also sounds like a snap, but indeed it's somewhere in between the others. And now let's talk a little bit about these parameters here. Okay, so we have time scale one, which means that everything that happens in this sound has more or less the same timing than in the original sample. Can make it tighter or looser. This is already a super powerful tool because when you are turning it up, it sounds more like something that is being played in a room. While this is more like a closed mic. So you can consider this to be some sort of control for the distance of the drums that you are designing. Let's keep it rather tight so that we have like the other ones open for the a little bit wider stuff. This is like a noise level, very noisy, very tonal. I like that. I don't know what density is exactly. I don't know. Let's just keep that for some other sound, I guess. I really like it the way it was. Now let's click on the next sound. You have to be really careful if you are loading a sound into one of these fields that you have selected the right track. I made the mistake in the beginning that I accidentally overwrote something that I had here and Usually I'm not someone who asks for um, undo redo, but oh, wait, there is undo and redo. I didn't see that before. Okay, for, forget what I said. I just, I was just about to say that um, plugins where you can load 
samples, you know, some unusual stuff that is not non-destructive, should have a little bit of undo redo. Even for someone like me who doesn't need it for knobs and stuff. Because when I turn the knob in the wrong way, I can just turn it back. Okay, here we have a big fat soldu sound. Oh, there it is. And what do we want to morph that with? A trumpet? No, that is a little bit too funky. But maybe a tumba? Yeah, why not? Ah, I see. Maybe this plugin has something like an envelope. Yeah, right, an envelope. That's exactly what I wanted to have. And maybe I can take this envelope and put it to a target. Okay, so what's this like? Track 2. They are not time scale, but I wanted it to have transform the right thing. Yeah. Cool. That confuses me now. I thought it would sound a little bit more like the sort of when you modulate this so fast. But it's, oh, it's pretty slow actually. Still looks the same. Yeah, it's not entirely clear if this is well programmed. It seems a bit wrong. The sustain set to zero and it sort of doesn't go there because this is zero and um, also it does not look like it's as fast as what this envelope generator makes it look like so let's um, maybe instead try the lfo maybe the lfo works a little bit better It's more like it. That's pretty cool. Now let's try changing the frequency. Okay, here we can hear the density a little bit better. This sounds like it's made of a lot of harmonic noise. And this is more like inharmonic noise, something that goes a little bit less perfect in some sense. Density to the left makes it sound hollow. And this is more like bulky. So one of them seems to be a bit notchy and the other one a little bit more belly in some sense. Okay, cool. I like that, that's pretty cool. So we have a whistle. <laughs> and now another whistle sound, but with a completely different melody.
I like that. I know it's a little bit of a different style. It's not the other ones try to be very naturalistic. And this one is like but I just like that. I wanna keep it. So now we have a wood block and another wood blocky thing. What I like about this example is that this wood block, since it's very roomy, doesn't have as much of a clean transient as this sample. So whenever you are not completely on the right, you now get a slightly smeared transient. So this is how you would get a slightly smeared transient, but very slightly. Okay, nice. So one thing that I did not understand about this plugin well yet is how to simply make the track louder because there is no parameter for that here as far as I can see, which is kind of weird because I think you have to go to the mixer for that, which is, well, this plugin has a lot of cool workflows, but that's not one of them. That's the filter. Okay, nice. So now it's time to make a little bit of a rhythm here. now wondering how can this ever be good then yeah i understand what you mean but i would like you to let me cook <sighs> no it's now 30 seconds because now it's time to modulate some of these parameters with automation and we have some macro controls over these already pretty macro controls which is exactly what i meant in the beginning of the video which change these parameters but for all of them globally so it means I can make some fancy shapes with automations and then it will be something completely different from what it is right now. And that way I can further shape it to whatever the speed needs. What makes this special is that I do not need to have an idea about what the speed needs. I can just try stuff and it will be cool. 
because these macros are just so well designed that I'm very positive that this is going to work out.
entire time, I thought this was the one.
But which notes even? Okay. I like that. Oh, another 30 seconds for me. Yeah, that's definitely a very worthy plugin. I think I'm going to buy it. I don't want to make an impulse decision, so I don't want to promise that I'm going to keep on using this plugin. But this is just my first impression is great plugin. Great plugin. A very fun plugin. Mm -hmm. And fun plugins are worth money. <laughs> 